they know that you care about them. And it's also, you get to hear how they feeling about certain situations. And you get the news quicker than the news gives it to you. Last week, the internet buzzed with viral images and videos showing police raids at the homes of Sean Diddy Combs. As more details emerge, the focus on the iconic rapper and producer intensifies, with old and new videos of him resurfacing, stirring public debate. Allegations are spreading, and rumors of potential criminal charges are gaining momentum. The dramatic raids were led by agents from the Department of Homeland Security at Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Miami. These operations, which involved heavily armed officers and tactical vehicles, appeared more like military assaults than typical law enforcement actions. The sight of swarms of law enforcement in these affluent neighborhoods caught the attention of fans, critics, and public figures, all reacting to what is shaping up to be a serious legal ordeal. So, what's the latest on this high-profile investigation? According to sources close to the federal authorities, these raids are tied to an ongoing human trafficking investigation. Reports suggest that the focus is on accusations of sex trafficking. A source within the Department of Homeland Security reportedly told the New York Post, We believe there is a disturbing history of sex trafficking. We are responding to detailed and explicit allegations. This is not random. We didn't just pick his name out of a hat. We had specific allegations that we are following up on. Sex trafficking, which falls under human trafficking, typically involves the exploitation of individuals for commercial sex, often through coercion, fraud, or force. The allegations are particularly serious when minors are involved. It's likely that investigators are meticulously piecing together evidence to support these potential charges. But for now, the public is left in suspense as the legal process unfolds. In the wake of the raids, a wave of videos featuring Diddy has surfaced online, with people re-examining them in light of the ongoing investigation. Recent footage shows Diddy still present in the Miami area, despite earlier speculation that he had fled the country. A fitness trainer claimed to have seen him at a local restaurant, where Diddy reportedly greeted people with his signature L hand gesture saying, love, what's up? The day before, he was seen with his teenage daughters at a top golf venue in Miami, seemingly unbothered by the gravity of the investigation. These public appearances are raising eyebrows, as many are questioning how he remains so composed amid such serious allegations. Earlier rumors suggested that Diddy had fled the US, with reports that his private jet had flown to the Caribbean on the day of the raids. This fueled speculation that he might be evading law enforcement. However, the jet has since returned to Florida, and Diddy's attorney, Aaron Dyer, has confirmed that his client is still in the country. Dyer condemned the raids as unnecessary, adding that Diddy has fully cooperated with authorities throughout the process and was never detained. As of now, Diddy, also known by stage names like P, Diddy, Puffy, and Simply Diddy, has not been arrested or formally charged in connection to the trafficking investigation. It's important to emphasize that, at this stage, the situation remains an active investigation with no official criminal charges filed. However, experts are starting to weigh in, and some believe that charges could be imminent. Tracy Walder, a former CIA and FBI special agent, shared her thoughts on the situation, stating that she fully expects charges to be brought against Diddy soon. According to Walder, Diddy is not just implicated, but may be the orchestrator of the alleged trafficking operation. While her comments are speculative, her background in law enforcement lends credibility to the growing concerns about Diddy's involvement. As the investigation continues, the spotlight remains on Diddy. What started as a shocking series of raids could evolve into one of the most significant criminal cases in recent years. With the world watching, it remains to be seen how this high-stakes situation will play out. If the Southern District of New York is involved in this case, it indicates that the investigation likely spans multiple states, potentially involving trafficking across various regions in the United States. This suggests that the situation is far from an isolated incident and may be part of a larger network 
of alleged criminal activity. Several legal analysts we've spoken to align with Tracy Walder's theory, adding weight to the possibility that these allegations are not far-fetched. Federal prosecutors from the Southern District of New York are known for their thoroughness, and the fact that they sought search warrants based on probable cause shows that they likely have substantial evidence in hand. For these warrants to be signed off by a judge, prosecutors must have presented compelling information, whether witness testimony or other forms of evidence. It's clear that these raids weren't carried out to make immediate arrests, but to collect crucial evidence. Analyzing this evidence will take time, and only then will authorities determine the next legal steps. In addition to the recent raids, it's highly plausible that authorities are issuing subpoenas, which legally compel individuals to provide information or testify under oath. Subpoenas are often used to build a solid case before presenting it to a grand jury, a group of citizens tasked with determining if there is enough evidence to formally indict someone. If the evidence gathered is sufficient, it could lead to the indictment of Sean Diddy Combs, along with others who may be implicated in this alleged trafficking operation. While no formal charges have been filed yet, the legal process is unfolding methodically, step by step. One of the most significant factors that may have accelerated this federal investigation is the emergence of potential witnesses who could provide crucial testimony, bolstering the case against Diddy and possibly others involved. These witnesses may offer first-hand accounts that directly link the rapper to the alleged trafficking ring, giving prosecutors the leverage they need to build a comprehensive case. But it's not just the dramatic Homeland Security raids at Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes that have captured the public's attention. Along with the images of tactical officers and vehicles storming his neighborhoods, older videos and comments related to the rapper and producer have resurfaced sparking renewed interest and speculation. These past incidents, when viewed through the lens of the ongoing investigation, have only intensified the scrutiny surrounding him. The raids themselves, which occurred just last week, were reminiscent of a military-style operation, complete with heavily armed officers entering Combs' upscale properties. The sight of such a large law enforcement presence sent shockwaves across the media igniting widespread speculation about the severity of the investigation. Federal authorities confirmed that these raids are part of a larger, ongoing probe, with some reports suggesting that the investigation is tied to human trafficking. According to sources, including a report by The New York Post, a Department of Homeland Security official commented, We believe there is a disturbing history of sex trafficking. We are responding to detailed and explicit allegations. This is not random. We didn't just pick his name out of a hat. We had specific allegations that we are following up on. Human trafficking is a serious crime that often involves exploiting people for forced labor, services, or, more commonly, commercial sex. In sex trafficking cases, victims, especially minors, are typically recruited transported, or coerced into sexual exploitation through deception, force, or threats. The evidence being collected in these raids, which reportedly includes electronic devices and documents, will likely be used to support charges related to these crimes. Amid the chaos of the raids, rumors began circulating that Diddy had fled the country. Reports indicated that his private jet took off for the Caribbean on the same day that the searches were conducted. Although the jet has since returned to Florida, Diddy's whereabouts during the raids were unclear, adding fuel to already rampant speculation. Adding to the scrutiny on Diddy are two major lawsuits that have been filed against him in recent months. One was brought by his ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Ventura, known as Cassie, while the other was filed by music producer Rodney Jones, also known as Little Rod Jones. Both lawsuits include serious allegations of violence, sexual assault, drug abuse, and even trafficking. In her lawsuit, Cassie claims that she was trapped in an abusive relationship with Diddy, alleging verbal, physical, and sexual abuse. She asserts that he forced her into sexual acts with prostitutes while he watched and recorded the encounters. 
and she accuses him of raping her when she tried to leave the relationship. These allegations paint a disturbing picture of a toxic and violent relationship that lasted for years. Meanwhile, Rodney Jones's lawsuit accuses Diddy of assault, harassment, and intimidation. Jones also claims that widespread drug use occurred at Diddy's events, with a man named Brendan Paul acting as Diddy's drug mule. Paul was arrested on drug charges in Miami on the same day as the raids. Additionally, Jones alleges that underage girls were present at Diddy's parties, suggesting possible sexual exploitation. He also claims that actor Cuba Gooding Jr. sexually assaulted him on a yacht, an incident that Jones alleges was orchestrated by Diddy. As a result, Cuba Gooding Jr. has been named as a co-defendant in the lawsuit. These aren't the only allegations Diddy is facing. His longtime rival, rapper 50 Cent, has been outspoken about the situation on social media. Following the raids, 50 Cent posted a series of memes and comments mocking Diddy's legal troubles. One post on Instagram read, Now it's not Diddy do it, it's Diddy done it, playing on the growing suspicion around Diddy's involvement. The post quickly went viral, further intensifying the public's focus on the case. Aubrey O'Day, a former member of the girl group Danity Kane, whose career was launched by Diddy in the early 2000s, also commented cryptically on Instagram following the raids. She posted, What you sow, you shall reap. I pray this emboldens all of us victims to finally speak on what we've endured. O'Day had previously suggested that she was fired from the group for reasons unrelated to her talent, hinting at inappropriate behavior behind the scenes, as these lawsuits, allegations, and high-profile reactions continue to pour in. They add fuel to an already raging fire surrounding Diddy's alleged criminal activity. The ongoing federal investigation could potentially uncover even more damaging evidence as authorities build their case. Prosecutors are likely focused on assembling a solid lineup of witnesses and gathering electronic and testimonial evidence, which could lead to additional charges. Even comedian Cat Williams weighed in on Diddy's behavior during a podcast appearance on NFL Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay. Back in January, before the raids, but after some lawsuits were filed against Diddy, Williams commented, I've had to turn down $50 million four times just to protect my integrity. P. Diddy wants to party, and you have to tell him no. These remarks, though made months before the raids, seem to echo the growing chorus of accusations against Diddy. As this investigation unfolds, the legal ramifications could be enormous, with more revelations likely to surface in the coming weeks. Whether the case leads to formal charges or fizzles out remains to be seen, but the world is certainly watching closely. Shannon Sharp's reaction showed that this was a big statement. Many people now think Williams predicted that 2024 might be Diddy's downfall. To be clear, Diddy is not being investigated for having sexual relations with men or women. But considering the allegations that Diddy forcibly touched or sexually assaulted people or engaged in sex trafficking of minors, Williams' statement seems different. This is just a claim from Cat Williams, and we can't verify it. Other videos are going viral online that seem to show Diddy's parties were infamous. For example, everyone knows the saying, ain't no party like a Diddy party. That was Diddy and NBA legend LeBron James. But others have recently said that Diddy's parties were not places you wanted to be. This includes rapper Uncle Luke, who spoke on the podcast We in Miami just last week. Did you party with Diddy a lot? No, not really. I would go to the party and leave early. Why wouldn't you stay late? I don't know what goes on after hours, but I wasn't trying to find out. One video that has gone especially viral after the raids shows Diddy's interaction with a then 15-year-old Justin Bieber back in 2009. It was posted on Bieber's YouTube channel titled 48 Hours with Diddy. In the video, Diddy says, given what we know about Diddy's party lifestyle from these lawsuits and people speaking out over the years, it's a bit concerning that someone so young was hanging out with him. 
In another video posted on Diddy's YouTube channel a year or so later, Bieber looks uncomfortable interacting with Diddy. Justin Bieber's visit with Diddy wasn't the first time the music executive had a rising star at his home. R&B icon Usher, who was signed to Diddy's record label, said during an interview with Howard Stern in 2016 that Diddy produced his first album. Usher talked about his year living with Diddy as a teenager. He said it was intense and curious. He got to see some things, but he was only 13 years old. He went there to see the lifestyle and he saw it, but he didn't really understand what he was looking at. It was pretty wild. When asked if he would let his kids do the same, Usher replied emphatically, hell no. Now, let's take a moment to thank Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this episode of Sidebar. As America's largest personal injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan has built its reputation by winning big cases, including a $6.8 million verdict in New York and $26 million in Philadelphia. They don't settle for lowball offers from insurance companies. You can even file a claim from the comfort of your home using your phone. With a modernized process, you can connect with your legal team directly from your smartphone. In just a few minutes and eight clicks or less, you can see if you have a case by visiting forthepeople.com LC. Another video has resurfaced, connecting two seemingly unrelated worlds. You might recall the recent documentary, Quiet on Set, which exposed alleged abuse, labor violations, and unusual behavior on Nickelodeon sets during the 90s and early 2000s. In the documentary, former cast members of the show All That spoke out about being forced to participate in uncomfortable scenes. Diddy made a guest appearance on the show in 2002, and in light of the allegations, this appearance has also gained renewed attention. The recent raids on Sean Diddy Combs' homes might not directly impact the ongoing investigation or any potential prosecution. However, there could be some connection. Federal authorities may want to talk to individuals involved in the lawsuits against him. Nadia Shihada, a New York federal prosecutor from the R. Kelly trial, mentioned that investigators usually seek all available information. She said they typically start by asking people to voluntarily provide information, but if that fails and the person is believed to have key evidence, a subpoena could be issued, legally compelling testimony. Celebrities are not immune to this process. We recently interviewed Shihada on Sidebar, and it was an insightful discussion. The day after the raids, Combs attorney, Aaron Dyer, released a statement calling the search warrant execution a gross overuse of military-level force. He described the action as an unprecedented ambush accompanied by a coordinated media presence, which he argued led to a premature rush to judgment. Dyer framed it as a witch hunt driven by meritless accusations from civil lawsuits. We also spoke to defense attorney Brian McMonagall, who previously represented Bill Cosby and Meek Mill for his thoughts on the statement. He called it a perfect response, signaling that Combs is not backing down and is prepared to fight. McMonagall noted that the message is clear. I'm innocent, and if you have something, bring it. He believes this shows that if charges are filed, Combs will likely take the case to trial. But what evidence might prosecutors have? Reports indicate that electronics were taken from Combs's home, possibly containing digital evidence like video files, emails, or text messages. Firearms were also seized, which could lead to charges of illegal possession. The disturbing accusations from civil lawsuits could also play a role especially considering the timing of the investigation and raids, which followed the filing of these lawsuits. It's possible that some plaintiffs are now cooperating with federal authorities. Prosecutors would likely want a significant number of witnesses ready to testify about their experiences with Combs. Additionally, some resurfaced videos might provide investigators with new leads. If this case heads to court, Combs will face formidable prosecutors, Criminal defense attorney Bradford Cohen, who has represented high-profile rappers like Kodak Black and YNW Melly, believes this will be an uphill battle for Diddy. As I mentioned earlier, federal authorities aren't just focused on gathering enough evidence to make an arrest. 
they aim to secure a conviction. While they technically have the power to indict anyone, their goal is to build a case strong enough to win, which is why they have an impressive 99% conviction rate. The Southern District of New York is particularly known for its thoroughness and efficiency. But what if this investigation into Combs turns out to be overblown and he's not involved at all? Could he take legal action against the government or those who cooperated with the investigation? Unfortunately, the answer is no. The raids on his home were conducted under a search warrant that was approved by a judge. Unless the warrant was based on false information, the authorities are legally protected. As long as the search warrant and supporting affidavit were truthful, the investigators acted on credible evidence and statements provided by individuals. Once a judge reviews and signs off on the warrant, the authorities are immune from lawsuits, even if they don't find anything during the search. This protection stems from what's known as the good faith exception, meaning the authorities acted in good faith based on available information. Likewise, prosecutors have immunity when bringing charges, so Combs wouldn't be able to sue them either. However, if the accusations are proven to be completely false, Combs could potentially pursue civil action against the individuals who made those claims. As for the arrest of Brendan Paul, an alleged drug mule, we asked defense attorney Bradford Cohen whether this arrest could be significant in the investigation surrounding Combs. Cohen suggested it might not be a critical development. Drawing on his 27 years of experience representing entertainers in cases involving drugs, firearms, and similar charges, Cohen explained that federal investigators usually aim to take down the bigger players, not the lower level individuals like Rodney Smith or a drug mule. In fact, the feds might even offer immunity to the drug mule in exchange for information about the top target, as high profile convictions generate more attention. It's going to be fascinating to see how this situation develops, especially now that it has captured the world's attention.